That shoots like absolute trash. Took every precaution, you know, let the barrel spool down. And... Does PSA think so? Probably. The tale of two rifles. On this bench here with me, I have the all new PSA Sabre Super SAS. This is an AR-10 platform chambered in 308. This is their forged Super SAS model. This obviously has a bunch of great features on it. But what I want to figure out today is if this rifle can truly perform all that well, or is it a complete waste of money? Because on this table, I also have this is an ADM or American Defense Manufacturing UIC-10. So this rifle, as you see here, costs about three times as much as what we have sitting here with the Super SAS. So these two rifles are grossly different when it comes to overall cost. ADM is a very well-established AR-10, AR-15 manufacturer and well-known for making some of the absolute finest rifles on the market when it comes to a gas gun. We'll go over all the features of these two rifles. We'll determine which one of these two is more accurate with the slew of different ammunitions that I have. And then in general, we'll also determine if it's even really worth spending the money on something like this ADM or just getting this awesome new PSA Super SAS. So let's get into some of the features of them. We'll start here with the rifle. Like I said, that costs about a third of this setup here. The scope I have on here is a Vortex Strike Eagle. 3 to 18 and an ADM 20 MOA titanium QD lever mount. It features a 20 inch barrel here on this model. It is going to be a one in 10 twist 5R rifled 416R barrel. So this rifle barrel itself is actually made by Faxon who makes excellent rifle barrels. It does have an adjustable rifle length gas block on here. And again, a 20 inch barrel. It has PSA's muzzle brake up here on the front. And then on the bottom here, you see I mounted a pick rail for this full M lock slots bipod up here in the front from Magpul. And then the rail itself is their timed one, which is very similar in looks to what you see from Knight's Armament. Obviously this rifle is meant to mimic something from Knight's Armament. Is it that? No. We'll see how it shoots. If it shoots that well, that would actually be an excellent value. Outside of that, this rifle has PSA's Sabre trigger in here which is an excellent two-stage trigger, very comparable to a Geisley. Is it as good as a Geisley? No, I won't say that, but it is a good trigger. I can't sit here and tell you that it has a, you know, a really, really crisp break like you get from a Geisley. It's more like you get to that wall and you got a little bit of creep there at the wall. Unlike what you see with a Geisley, which you just don't have that. Good audible reset, so like I said, a little bit of creep there. Not a real crisp break like you may find on the Geisley trigger inside this ADM rifle. You do have a Radian Raptor charging handle, Radian Talon Ambi safety on here, and this is the forged model, not the billet model, so therefore you do not have Ambi controls on this lower. There's no Ambi bolt release, and in addition to that, there's no Ambi magazine release. Receiver fit and finish on here looks really, really good. They don't have any tensioning screws that I see on here, but in general, the overall fit and finish of this rifle, at a price point that I scooped this up for a little over $1,500, seems really good so far. The bolt itself, you'll notice it actually looks chromed because it is. This is a chrome bolt carrier group in this rifle, and then it has a heavy buffer tube here in the rear with the B5 precision rifle stock. Nice stock on here, I really like that. In fact, we'll get into something here on the ADM where it didn't come with that. The rail section itself, everything on this rifle looks really good. Overall fit and finish and good quality control that sometimes people will complain about they don't get with PSA products all the time. So this rifle for me, I haven't found anything yet with this thing that could be an issue. I haven't shot it yet. I've shot this rifle a little bit, not for accuracy. Today we'll shoot both of them for accuracy. Now. The ADM UIC-10, a very well-known rifle amongst serious shooters. The reason I say that is because for the average person, this rifle is way out of your price range. And in general, what you'll notice is that these rifles are very capable of shooting sub MOA accuracy on a regular basis with match grade ammunition. Both these rifles I think will be capable of that. I know that these ADM rifles are because of everything I've read and I've seen. I haven't shot this thing for accuracy, so I'm curious to see how well I can shoot it and see if it will do that. Up here on the rail, the ADM rail itself has a lot of lightning cuts across the top section of it. It has a picatinny rail that goes all the way across, but then has lightning cuts down the middle of it as well. 
It does have an adjustable gas block, a lot like what the PSA rifle has, except this one is an SLR brand rifle block. So it's a very, very nice adjustable gas block. Up here on the front, you're gonna see this one actually has a Surefire work comp. You can order these rifles and get basically any muzzle device you want on the front of them. So if you want a Surefire, or a Surefire one, if you want a Chemo one, or you know an ASR, whatever you may want, you can get it on these rifles. This one for me though, does have a Surefire work comp. On the rear here, you do have a really nice ratcheting style castle nut, QD socket in the rear, and then no QD sockets here on the rail. Beefy, you do have QD sockets on the rail for your saber. And then on the rear here, this came with nice Magpul furniture. It had a nice Magpul stock, but for me, I wanted more of a precision style stock. So I went ahead, spent a little extra money, and got the B5 precision rifle stock on here. Then you also notice the grip I have on here, that is a Die Free Co. Kung Fu grip. Really nice feeling vertical style grip. Chances are I may even end up putting one here on the Sabre, but on this one, I went ahead and put it on here. This had fine furniture for probably 99% of the people out there. I just wanted a different stock for it. Now, you do have forward assist levers or buttons on both of these rifles. Now, what really separates the ADM series of rifles in general from everybody else in the market is how well they do a Ambi lower. Their Ambi lower actually has a release and a bolt lock where you can man manipulate the rifle without ever actually having to take your finger or your hand off the grip itself. Now for me, I can lock the bolt to the rear without ever taking my hand off the grip. That's very different from some of the other rifles on the market where you can lock the bolt with your dominant hand if you're a right-handed shooter. This rifle does have ambi safeties on it as well. These safeties are 45 degree throw versus a 90. Of course, you can change these to be 90 here on the PSA rifle. Radiant charging handle on this one as well. Same goes for those. Now the bolt on this one itself. Now the bolt finish is a much newer design. They're using a more, let's say, modern coating versus chrome line. The chrome line is very, very good. I think a lot of people will agree that it's an excellent finish. What they're using on here though is much slicker. And I found from shooting this probably roughly 40 rounds that carbon just does not stick to it. It's a really well done bolt. Uh, everything you've come to expect for a high-end rifle, that frankly costs this much. The ADM UIC-10 on their site shows that it's a $3,200 rifle. Did I pay that much for it? Absolutely not. Do I think it's worth $3,200? Mm, that's up to the individual. But this thing does have some things on it that you really don't get from any other rifle manufacturer on the market. And one of the biggest things that we haven't talked about yet with this barrel is that it has one of the most well-renowned rifle barrels for the AR platform on the market, and that is the Criterion barrel. This does have a 416 stainless barrel, one in 10 twist. This model itself has a 16 inch barrel on it. You can get an 18 or a 20. So the barrel difference on these two is a little bit shorter here for the ADM. However, at 100 yards, you're not gonna see any difference in overall accuracy. We won't have any issues. The scope, again, you see that obviously this rifle itself has a night force on it. This is a two and a half to 20 MOA base scope. Left side of the rifle, ambi features as well. So you get a bunch more ambi features on the ADM rifle. You get an H3 buffer system instead of just a standard heavy buffer system. Adjustable gas block, it's a little bit nicer. It is from SLR, a nicer muzzle brake, better finishes. This is a billet rifle, okay? So it's not forged. Generally speaking, your billet rifles will cost more. It has a little bit nicer barrel lockup design. This is very clean and smooth, but you can't sit there and say that it's also the strongest design on the market. So ADM, it's a lot of money. What will be disappointing for myself is that if I shoot this rifle, this ADM, and it doesn't shoot as good as this Super SAS from PSA, what that will tell you guys is that for the average person, this PSA Sabre, if it shoots better than this ADM rifle, this is gonna be more worth your money. For me, yeah, I went out and bought this. I just, sometimes I just really like high-end shit and I can't help it. But what I can tell you is that I also bought this rifle because I think it looks cool. This rifle, without a doubt, is an eye-catching rifle. And we're gonna get out here on the range now. We'll shoot both of these rifles for groups with several different ammo types, and we'll ultimately crown which one of these two rifles is more accurate and which one I think is truly the best buy for your hard-earned dollar. To start off today, I'm gonna shoot the ADM UIC-10. I have Hornady Tap ammunition. This is 308, 168 grain AMAX. 
For both guns, we'll shoot a, a first three round group with both of them using this stuff and then I'll get into some of the other ammos once I can confirm that both the guns have a good enough zero for this. Again, we'll start off with the ADM. Now we'll shoot the PSA Super Sass. One cool looking rifle, I will say that. It's hard to beat how good this thing looks. Immediately what I'll tell you is nice about the ADM is the fact that it does have that ambi bolt release and bolt catch. It's very easy just to slap that button or that lever down on the ADM. And then in addition to that, the little ping pong paddle on the left side of the rifle here for the Super Sass actually does not have a knob at the bottom, which is a little bit different than what you see. Uh, not a deal breaker, it's just, let's just kind of call it like unfinished i just wish that part it was actually there and on top of that this thing had a full-blown billet bolt release like that does so between the two rifles between the two rifles that very first initial group i have two rounds touching for the ADM and one round that is just, let's say, an inch above those. So you're about an inch and a quarter group out of the ADM with the AMAX. And then with the Super Sass, I have, let's see, what do we got? It's about a two inch group. So the group size is a little bit larger here with the Super Sass. Not a big deal, because we're gonna shoot a bunch of different ammos. And overall, we'll get a chance then to look at these two guns and see which one of the two ultimately is able to shoot, let's say maybe even just a certain ammo better than the other one. So let's get into some more ammo types. Next up, we're gonna shoot SIG. 168 grain OTM, so it's open tip match ammo. I suppose I could give you a long drawn out answer as to which rifle's better. But if I'm being frank, between these two targets, neither one's acceptable. So uh, the ADM, like I said before, is a 20, let's say $2,700 rifle, street price. Uh, this is my ADM rifle target here. So all of these rounds, groups are all ADM related. So you'll see that I have a about inch and a half group, inch and a half group, maybe two inches there or three. You have about maybe an inch group there is probably our closest. Uh, then another one down there and another one. I, you know, we could, I could sit here and take forever and show you guys every single bullet that went into those, but they're all match gray bullets and none of those are sub MOA. We'll go into the PSA gun. So the PSA Saber Super Sass is everything but a Super Sass in my opinion. Uh, again, all match grade ammunitions. Not a single one, 165 grain, 168 grain, 168 grain, 175 grain, 175. None of them shot particularly well. 
one inch, you know, there's, there's not a single MOA group amongst the Super SAS. Inch and a half, so the ADM, yeah, it shoots a little better, but if I'm being completely honest, accuracy wise, at this point in the game, the two accuracy, let's say, tests I did with the ammos, neither one of these rifles shoots as much as they cost. I think some gas guns are capable of shooting one MOA. These two, with the ammos that I have on hand, neither one's capable of doing it, at least from what I'm seeing on the paper. Uh, I took every precaution, you know, I let the barrels cool down in between strings of fire, I only did three shots to kind of help speed that process up a little bit, made sure the barrels weren't warm every time I shot them, good rest, bag, steady, you know, table I'm shooting off of there with our bench, and neither one shot all that great. You know, the ADM shoots better. It's a better shooting experience. I'll say it's softer shooting with a better trigger. Uh, the recoil impulse is much smoother. It's much softer than what you're getting on the PSA Super SAS. I think it's a better rifle. It also costs twice as much. Do I think it's twice as good? Nope, sure don't. Uh, do I think the, the Super SAS shoots like a $1,600 rifle should? Hmm. No. Does PSA think so? Probably. Do I? No. Not really. I think it's a nice rifle. I think it has a really nice barrel on it that Faxon's known, well known for making. I think this has a Criterion. Well known for being a great barrel. I think both of them are maybe one minute guns. Uh, I think that there is an ammo out there that they'll, they'll shoot really well. I don't have any of those on hand. So unfortunately, I can't say I'm overall all that thrilled with either one of these rifles. So who's the winner? I don't know. You guys tell me. 